Hi, I'm Mike Chappell, and in this Cert Mike Explains video, I'm going to tackle a topic that is covered on almost every cybersecurity certification exam, cryptography. Cryptography is often one of the most intimidating topics found on these exams, but it doesn't need to be overwhelming. Let's break down some of the most important concepts that you'll need to know as you answer exam questions. To begin, let's talk about what cryptography actually is. Well, cryptography is the use of math to transform data into a form that prevents a third party from viewing it without permission. Now, cryptography uses two different operations to accomplish this. First, the encryption operation takes a plain text message and converts it into an encoded form known as ciphertext using an encryption key. Let's take a look at an example. Here's a plain text email message that I'd like to send to my friend Beth. It's telling her the code to the keypad on the door to my office building. Now that's certainly secret information that I wouldn't want anyone else to see. If someone intercepted this message, they could break into my building. Now as a cybersecurity professional, I know that email messages by themselves are pretty insecure. They might bounce all over the internet on the way to their destination, and I'm worried that someone might intercept and read my message to Beth, and then use this information to break into my building. That's where encryption comes to the rescue. I'm going to take this message and run it through an encryption function to prevent people other than Beth from reading its contents. When I do this, I have to provide the encryption function with both the plain text message and an encryption key. I'll get back to what that key is in just a moment, but for now, just know that the key is what helps provide secrecy. So when I feed that plain text message and the key into the encryption function, that function produces a ciphertext message as output. Here's what that ciphertext message might look like. And this is unintelligible. I can't make any sense of the contents of this message. And importantly, neither can anyone else who comes across it. I can then take this encrypted message and send it over the internet to Beth. If it's intercepted along the way, there's no problem. The message is encrypted, and it's safe from prying eyes. When Beth receives the message, she also can't make heads or tails of it. But Beth has the ability to decrypt this message. And that's the second major operation of cryptography. Decryption takes a ciphertext message and uses a decryption key to convert it back into plain text form. Here's how that works from Beth's perspective. She takes the encrypted ciphertext message and feeds it into a decryption function along with the required decryption key. Once she does this, she gains access to the plain text message and now knows the code to enter my building. That process is the basic concept of cryptography. We take plain text data and convert it into an unreadable form so that it is safe from unauthorized access. I gave you an example of cryptography for an email message, but that's only one application of this powerful tool. Let's talk about a few other examples of places we might use cryptography. The first major category of cryptographic operations is protecting data in motion, information that's exposed because it's traveling from one place to another over a network. The email message that I mentioned earlier is an example of data in motion, but it's not the only example. Web content is also an example of data in motion. If I'm using a web browser to access my bank account, I want the information being sent to me to remain private. And I definitely want my online banking password to remain secret. The secure version of the Hypertext Transport Protocol, HTTPS, adds encryption to web traffic. There are plenty of other examples of using encryption to protect data in motion as well. We can remotely access computer systems using the Secure Shell Protocol, SSH, or the Remote Desktop Protocol, RDP. Both of those protocols use encryption to protect data that's being sent over the network from eavesdropping. The second category of cryptographic applications is protecting data at rest. Information that is stored somewhere and might fall victim to an attacker who manages to break into that storage location. I might take a sensitive file and put it on a USB drive to share it with a colleague. That USB drive contains stored data, and I probably want to encrypt that file in case my colleague or I lose that drive. Full disk encryption, or FDE, goes even further and encrypts the hard drive of my laptop computer. 
If I lose that computer, all of the contents of the drive are safe from view because of this encryption. Backups are another great example of data at rest. Backups contain all sorts of sensitive information, and I want to protect them from falling into the wrong hands. If I've encrypted my backups, I don't need to worry about the security concerns of losing that backup media. Now that you understand how we might use encryption, let's turn our attention back to the encryption keys that I mentioned earlier. The key plays a very important role in the world of cryptography. It brings secrecy to the algorithm. You can think of cryptographic keys as the passwords to successfully performing encryption and decryption operations. When you decrypt a ciphertext message, if you use the correct key, you get back the plain text used to create that ciphertext. If you use the wrong key, on the other hand, you get back a bunch of garbage. This is what prevents anyone without the correct decryption key from decrypting your messages. Now, there are two major categories of encryption algorithms, and the difference between them rests in the keys that are being used. In symmetric algorithms, the encryption and decryption keys are the same. If I encrypt a message with a secret key, the recipient of that message has to use the same key to decrypt it, just like a password. I need to be sure to share the symmetric encryption key with anyone that I want to read my data. In asymmetric encryption algorithms, the encryption and decryption keys are different, but they're mathematically related to each other. Let's dig into that in a little more detail. When we use asymmetric cryptography, each user has two keys, a public key and a private key. The public key is freely shared with anyone in the world. There's nothing secret about that public key, and it's fine to give it away to anyone. There's nothing bad that someone can do to you just because they have your public key. Now, the private key, on the other hand, has to be kept secret. You can think of it as the password to your cryptographic algorithm, and you should protect that private key just like you'd protect a password. If someone else gains access to your private key, they can read your private data, and they can even impersonate you, and that's a big problem. Now here's the cool part. Anything that's encrypted with one key from a pair can only be decrypted with the other key from that same pair. If everybody knows everyone else's public key, anyone can encrypt messages using that key, and then those messages can only be decrypted by the person who owns the related private key. Now before I walk you through an example, I just want to take a moment to invite you to visit my website at certmike.com. On that site, I have free study plans put together to help you earn your next cybersecurity certification. Those plans tie together the content that you'll find in study guides, video courses, and practice tests to help you prepare for your next cybersecurity certification exam and pass that test on the first try. Also, if you're enjoying this Cert Mike Explains video, please take a moment to click the like button below to help other people discover it. If you subscribe to my channel, you'll be among the first to see my other cybersecurity videos as they come out. Okay, let's look at an example. Here are Alice and Bob. They're two people who want to communicate with each other using an asymmetric encryption algorithm. Now, Alice has her own public and private key pair. And Bob also has his own pair of keys. And Alice and Bob also have each other's public keys, which they've freely exchanged. Alice has this plain text message that she wants to send to Bob, but Alice would like to protect it with encryption. So she takes the message and feeds it into the encryption algorithm. When she does this, she provides Bob's public key. That produces a ciphertext message that Alice can then send to Bob. When Bob receives the message, he feeds it into the decryption function along with his own private key. Since the message was encrypted with Bob's public key, it's then decrypted with the other key from that same pair, Bob's private key. The output of this operation is the plain text message that Alice created. Now, the beauty of this algorithm is that once the message is encrypted, nobody other than Bob can decrypt it because nobody else has access to Bob's private key. In fact, Alice herself can't even decrypt the message, even though she was the one who actually created it in the first place, because she doesn't have Bob's private key. Cryptography confuses many people when they're preparing for cybersecurity exams. 
I hope that this video helped you understand the topic better. If it did, please click the like button below and subscribe to my channel for more cybersecurity content.